That is totally unfair. There's no way you can avoid that motorcycle. These things always interested me. They're like walking chickens. Walking cooked chickens. Ed209, is that like the dumbest name for a robot ever? I guess that's probably the idea. Ah, he's done. Well, hello and welcome back to Greg's Game Room. Now, I have been playing a lot of different games on my arcade 1UP system using my Raspberry Pi. Now, it occurred to me that I have not shown you guys how to set up a Raspberry Pi so that you can play all of these games yourself. So I've come up with a list of parts that you're gonna need and I'll show you how to build a Raspberry Pi Retro Pi arcade system of your very own. All right. Here we are in the computer room. I'm gonna do a little research for you and show you where to get some of this stuff. All right, so let's get started. Well, you know, after you check out Greg's game room, of course. Anyway, the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to get is obviously the Raspberry Pi. Now, as you can see, you can get it off of Amazon for 40 bucks, so it's not too bad. This is a really good kit, I think. Uh, it has the heat sinks and the case and everything that you need to get this going. You will need some kind of a power supply. Here's a dedicated power supply just for the Raspberry Pi. Pi, but you can use a micro USB, I believe it is. It's kind of the same cable that you would use for your Android phone. And of course you're going to need some kind of a SD card. In this case I just found a little 16 gig card for you know about seven dollars. And really that's plenty of size that you need to start a Raspberry Pi retro Pi setup. And if you don't already have one you're gonna need a HDMI cable. Here's one for six bucks. You might want to opt for the uh, six foot cable which is seven dollars. Then when I searched for Xbox controller on Amazon, of course Amazon's going to be pushing their Xbox controller right off the top. This is an Xbox One controller and I'm pretty sure this will work with the Pi but I use a 360 controller and it works perfectly fine. But uh, yeah you probably have one of these already but I, I would go with the wired ones because it's a little bit easier to plug and play with a wired controller versus a wireless controller. Okay, so the software that you're gonna need is, one of them is on retropi.org.uk. You're gonna wanna click down here to the Raspberry Pi 2 and 3 image. Just go ahead and save that. And then you're gonna wanna go to the Windows 32 Disk Imager. You can get this off of SourceForge. This is a tool that's actually gonna burn that RetroPie image to your flash card. So go ahead and download that. And then we're also going to need WinRAR. If you don't already have that, that's a tool that will extract the image. Go ahead and download the 64 bit image. I'm assuming you have 64 bit windows. So once those files download, first thing you'll do is go ahead and run the WinRAR executable. Go through the setup process for that and then go through the setup process for the Win32 disk imager. And then you'll want to extract your RetroPie image that you downloaded from uh, the RetroPie website. It takes a minute to uh, unzip it, un, un LZH it, un RAR it, whatever, whatever format that it's in. Okay, now that you have it extracted, go ahead and run the Win Disk32 Imager tool. It's gonna say, well, what image do you want to burn? Basically, you're burning this image to an SD card. All right, so we'll go ahead and once we've selected the image that we want and the drive letter that it's gonna go to, then we're gonna hit write. Let's hope it works. There it goes. And as you can see, it's gonna take about eh, eight minutes. Okay, so now that I got my SD card all set up, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the Pi here. There's a little socket right here on the side. Real good. And then I'll go ahead and plug in everything else. Got my ethernet connection right here. We're gonna plug that in because we're gonna need that for later. Then I've got my HDMI connection right here. And then I've got the power connection that's right here and that goes right here like that oh the light came on right off the bat and now my pie can just sit nicely right next to my sega dreamcast yeah i forgot to plug in my controller too now you'll notice when you boot it up for the very first time it's going to do some work here Not really sure what the heck it's doing but just let it run just let it do its thing eventually it'll come up to the uh, screen okay after a little bit of a wait it'll come up with this prompt asking you to configure a device so we're gonna go ahead and do that on the Xbox controller hold the button on the device and it senses it it's an Xbox 360 controller d-pad up d-pad down d-pad left d-pad right start select a B X Y left shoulder right shoulder left trigger right trigger left thumb right thumb 
because you can push in on these uh, these little joystick thingies and then hotkey enable. I have no idea what that's for. Maybe I'll just you know, make it the center button. Sure, that, that works. Well, now I just jumped into this. I guess after you just wait a few moments, it'll go straight into it. Okay, now that we have our Raspberry Pi set up with RetroPie, we're going to have to put some games on it. Now, this is kind of the shady area that I'm not going to really help you with, but I will show you what to do once you do find the games. You're going to want to do this. After you watch all of the uh, Greg's Game Room videos, of course, go to your Start button, and then you're going to want to hit backslash backslash RetroPie. Press enter, and you're gonna see these folders, BIOS, config, splash screens, and ROMs. Go into the ROMs folder. Now I've already collected a couple of Atari 2600 ROMs that I'm gonna put in there. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy and drop them into the Atari 2600 folder. Now if you have ROMs for other systems like, I don't know, Game Gear, Sega Genesis, MAME, Sega Master System, Neo Geo, Nintendo NES, PC Engine, which is the same as the Turbo Graphics, Sega 32X, Super Nintendo. If you have ROMs for any of these other game systems, you can drop them into these folders, and when you get back to your RetroPie system, you'll be able to see them in the menu. All right, let's get back to our RetroPie. Okay, it's booting back up again. There we go. There's my Atari list. All I had to do was drop in the ROMs. I didn't have to do any other special configuration. So let's just see if those three ROMs are there. Here we go. Adventure, Asteroids, and Pitfall. All right, so I don't know what was going on with Pitfall. I must have just had a bad ROM, but uh, it seems to be fine with Adventure. So it's kind of my go-to game. I'm gonna find us some dragons. There he is. Hey, what's up, buddy? Oh, you're trying to eat me, huh? Yeah. Yeah, good luck with that. And then to exit back out to the menu, you're gonna to wanna to hit the, whatever the hotkey is that you chose, which is, I chose the Xbox Jewel button, and then the Start button, and it'll bring you back to the menu, and then you can select another game. All right, I'm just gonna hook it back into my Arcade 1UP here. Okay, so when I hooked it directly into the Arcade 1UP with my X-Arcade controller, it defaults to saying, hey, I can't find any game pads on here. Do you wanna press a button and configure this one? Once you've selected all the keys that you want, you're gonna get uh, some keys that probably don't make sense. You just hold down any key and it'll just skip it. All right, now I got Adventure going again. So, start, here we go, we're back to Adventure. So this is how I quickly set up RetroPie on my Arcade 1UP system. Hmm, now I just have to put my other memory card into the Raspberry Pi. I wonder if what would happen if I just did it in the middle of its thing here. Probably screw it up. Let's go for it. Let's try it. Let's take this one, put it in. All right, put that in there like that. We'll see what happens. Probably just killed it. Oh, it's like it rebooted. Oh, it's freaking out. <laughs> so I guess don't swap out your memory cards in the middle of it. Um, no, I guess I'll have to like power it down. And it's back to normal. Hmm. What should I play though? Batman. Oh, that guy's got a gun. Why would Batman like walk around holding his cape like over himself like that? That's kind of dumb. That's like the most awkward kick I've ever seen. Open up the open up the Batmobile already! Come on! There we go. I guess I'm supposed to shoot the black cars and not the red ones. They're getting too close to me. It's hard to hit those guys. It's funny how the trunks like look like they're popping open. Okay, ooh, next level. Oh, Axis Chemicals. Find Jack Napier. Do I get to throw him into the vat of uh, green goo? There we go. <laughs> People are just suiciding right into that, that the vat there. What would happen if Batman fell into the uh, vat of Smilex? That would be a, that'd be a creepy, creepy looking Batman, wouldn't it? Uh-oh. Oh, I almost fell in. We're almost found out. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Get up there. Come on, Joker, where are you? Oh, there he is. That's gotta be him. And he just killed me. Oh, I gotta hit him back into the acid. Get back in there, Jack Napier. Ah! Oh! All right, well, there you have it. There's the basics for setting up a Raspberry Pi into a RetroPie arcade station. Now you're gonna need to use your Columba-like research skills and find your own ROMs and your own settings to put on this thing. Or you could go to a website called arcadepunks.com. They've got pre-made images there in different configurations and uh, it makes the process quite a bit easier. Anyway, if you found this video useful, please consider subscribing down below. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day and we'll see you next time.